every year. The PSP case control study that has been launched in CRR today will try to determine the effectiveness of PCV-13. This is important not only to the Gambia, but to West Africa, Africa, and the world at large. Underlying the significance of the project, the architect of the study and the brain behind the pneumococcal surveillance project in the Gambia, Dr. Grant McKenzie, stresses the success of it in the Gambia will determine the viability of the vaccine for use the world over. A smooth working relations between the health team and the community, McKenzie emphasizes, is crucial in order to get all those children under five years. The unit director of MRC, the Gambia, Professor Tumani Kaur, said this PSP project will strengthen Benson Hospital in CRR with improved power supply, more doctors and nurses, better equipment to provide excellent care for the sick child. Thanks to the good work carried out by the Gambian Government Department of State for Health, Ministry of Health and the MRC. What does this study mean to the people of Fuladu West? The study will contribute towards the strengthening of Bansan Hospital. Power supply would be improved. The machine working will become available. The lab will become more functional. There will be increased numbers of doctors and nurses. It can only mean one thing, excellent care to the sick child. For the Director of Health Services, Dr. Mamali Cham, the project in URR and CRR is a big plus for the health sector. Any nation's prosperity depends on good health conditions of its citizens, Cham for the notes, lamenting the disturbing statistics of child mortality in 1973, which stood at 203 children per 1,000 children, which now dropped to 77 per 1,000, due largely to effective immunization. This, he says, aligns with the efforts of the health ministry and its partners, such as the MRC. For his part, the deputy governor, Central River Region, Malang Seibu Kamara, assures his office's full support to the project, urging all community heads and attendants to spread the information and make work easy for the health officials for their own good. As part of the luncheon ceremony, officials proceeded to Bansang Hospital to inspect the facility refurbished with a variety of electrical and medical equipment such as a brand new 75kV VA generator. X-ray machines with a pledge to refurbish and rehabilitate other facilities in the hospital for the Nimikoko Surveillance Case Control Research Project. Babukar Jamme, CEO of Bansang Hospital, recognizes MRC as an important medical research partner to Bansang Hospital and the country in general. Pneumonia is uh, one of the leading disease conditions resulting to the death of many of our young children. A successful vaccine for the above mentioned disease will be used worldwide as uh, mentioned in the opening at the governor's office. The research has come at no better time than now. For GRTS News, I am Ajami Sise. Members of the Association of Gambian Manufacturers are receiving training on food safety and quality. The two-day program convened by the National Sanitary and Phytosanitary Committee in collaboration with the Enhanced Integrated Framework Project is expected to increase the participants' access to opportunities in international markets. Daikumadenba has more. Manufacturing is an important subsector of the economy of the Gambia. Not only does it serve as revenue generation for economic growth, but also a medium of employment and have over the years generated competition in both the domestic and international markets. This capacity building training is meant to coach food processors and manufacturers on a host of issues, among them the development and implementation of standards and other technical requirements, with emphasis on sanity and measures on food processing and manufacturing. This, according to officials, will facilitate their survival in a very competitive market. The Food Act of 2005 and now the Safety and Quality Bill 2010 have defined the framework for sanity and phytosanity standard setting and compliance. Um, it's high time because in Africa we're still importing a significant amount of food that we consume. Um, and we do, we do have the lands, we do have the manpower. It's time, I think, we employ them to come together and for us to be able to kind of produce something. One of the key areas that we feel should be included in this training is regarding packaging and labeling. We have realized that in this country, these are very critical areas that, is, that our manufacturers, our processors face. The capacity building training is set to boost the capacities of local food manufacturers and enhance their smooth entry into the international markets. 
For JRTS News, I am Deiko Madiemba. You can also follow that story and other JRTS programs live on our website at www.jrts.gm. There you can monitor JRTS Radio Live. The next Operation Clean the Nation is slated for Saturday, 30th July 2011 throughout the Gambia. A media release from the National Environment Agency reminds all governors, Sefolu, Alkalolu and councillors that a presidential directive requires all of them to organize and coordinate the national cleanup exercise in their respective areas. The NEA to the dispatch solicit the support and active participation of all and sundry in the upcoming exercise. From there we take our first break, the news continues in a moment. Properties. Pour <laughs> Guy take ticket of Welcome back. The president of the Ivory Coast, Alassane Ouattara, says his government will institute a fair and non-discriminatory judicial system central to ongoing reconciliation efforts. Ouattara was speaking at the United Nations headquarters in New York where the Security Council adopted a resolution seeking to extend the mandate of the UN mission in Abuja. We have more in this report. Ivorian President Alassane Ouattara reacted to a critical report by Amnesty International from United Nations headquarters in New York where he was meeting with UN Secretary General Ban okay. Ki-moon. Ouattara says he is the president of all Ivorians. He is calling for a fair judicial system essential to the process of reconciliation. I'd like to say strongly that uh, we want the rule of law in Côte d'Ivoire. We don't want to accept impunity in Côte d'Ivoire. We'll have reconciliation on the one track, but the judicial system will do also its work on the other track. And justice will be for everyone the same, no distinction. Alassane Ouattara can count on the backing of the international community concerning the challenge of establishing law and order in Côte d'Ivoire. His visit to UN headquarters coincides with the adopting by the Security Council of a resolution extending by one year the mandate of the UN mission in Côte d'Ivoire, where it played a crucial role during the crisis. The resolution calls for maintaining UN troops in the country. UN troops currently number about 9,500 in Côte d'Ivoire. The UN will also certify the results of legislative elections there scheduled for the end of the year, and it will protect the civilian population. Britain has announced its recognition of Libya's National Transitional Council in a move that saw London open the doors of the Libyan embassy there to diplomats from Benghazi. And the authorities in Guinea are tightening the news on the country's media in response to its reporting of the recent assassination attempt on President Alpha Conde. We have details of this and other stories in this run-up of African news. The UK has recognized the National Transitional Council as Libya's rightful governing body, stepping up the pressure on Tripoli. London therefore kicked out pro-Gaddafi diplomats from the Libyan embassy, opening the doors of the same building for rebel representatives. More and more isolated, Gaddafi's regime denounced the move as irresponsible and illegal. To achieve the, their criminal goals. The president of the Order of Lawyers of Burundi was arrested on Wednesday after he was questioned by the Court of Appeals in Bujumbura. Isidore Ririki is accused of contempt. Lawyers waited outside the court to show their support for their president.
This comes after lawyers went on strike following the arrest of